Week eight, week seven has come and gone. Uh, legs don't look the same as they used to. Um, yeah. yeah, pretty bad week for people that were running and walking on knees that went one mm-hmm. foot went the opposite direction. I love the analysis on the game. Was like, he'll have to get a second opinion on his, like he'll have to get do some tests on his ankle. I was like, nope. I am not a medical doctor, nor have I ever been even close to being a medical doctor. That ain't supposed to be that way. Uh, he done for the season. Um, we are here. Mark, how are you? You look great as always. Strong, beautiful, healthy. I'll bring it back. How are you? Forgot about that. Uh, Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. You know, it's a good Saturday. Yeah. You know, Aggies won again. Uh, the T Sips lost. Fantastic. I loved every minute of it. Um, Sunday was all right. Uh, good Did picks. You call them T sips. Okay. Never heard that. Fair enough. That's what it is. Again, we're, we're, we're fine. It doesn't matter. No, I was just talking about stuff that doesn't matter. Um, Bar, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Better than a lot of the players that got hurt this week. Um, but, you know, doing good. Grounded. Uh, yeah, I got nothing, n- nothing more to say right now. Uh, Scully, how are you? You guys think I should do over or under on Bronny Games half a point for, for <laughs> Um, I'm doing pretty well. Um, fun, fun, stress-free week without my team playing. So, yeah, it was pumpkin patch day for me on Sunday. Are you a grown man? He got mistaken for the scarecrow multiple times. You go to a pumpkin patch during NFL? Well, this was the one Sunday that I really, you know, could, so... Oh, now who doesn't watch the games? You, you were with somebody, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was. I Thank drank God. like four angry orchards. Was, 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 this person, was this person a female? Yes. Oh, more specific. Okay, thank God. Were they stuffed with hay? You get a Would pass. it have not been okay if it wasn't a female? No, I well, not that we. If you were there by yourself, mid twenty, yeah, really not weird. that we, not that we share a lot of our details, but I know which way that you swing the bat. So I'm assuming that I was like, if it's a girl, if you, and I your had brother, four angry orchards in a corn maze that in, in a in a, in a corn maze that was only five feet tall. It was a great time. If you went with your dad to the corn like during football, I'm like, uh, I have some issues with what you did. So. I would have had issues too. Listen, I've already recorded. I've watched a round two roundtable movies that were uh, a part of the LGBT, and I didn't like them. I do not need to be non-ally, so don't put that on me, Scully. Um, Robert, Hi. how are you doing? Good. I had a I had a screen that represented the color of the jersey that I'm wearing, and could not get off of it. So thus the delays. But here I am, trying to. That is fair. That is fair. Um, uh, overall, uh, last week, can, we'll catch up. Um, I don't have graphics. Um, 
Scully went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and five. five. Good job. Good job. I hate that there's an echo. I don't know why that is, but it's probably just in my ears. Um, Coho also went ten and five. I went 11 and four. Robert went 11 and four. Shocking that he can't ever get away from me. Um, Mark is 11 and four. Uh, Nazario, a lot of red. Uh, nine and six. And 10 and five. Is Bar. Yeah, Bar, Coho, and Scully, we've kind of learned the like people, like those group don't really know ball. Like they only they have a lot of egos. They care about divisional stuff. They get me me me. They, Green Bay's playing Houston. I can't take Green Bay. Give me Houston. Wrong, wrong. Um. So I took Green Bay. Sorry, wh- which one of us took the Chargers for three because they were a little scared about the matchup, and and the rest of you guys took them for what, like eleven or twelve? I took you them for eight. Me. I took them for eight. So. He told me Justin Herbert was going to throw for 350 yards, and they lost. I would not have believed you. He's also I said I that he should have won. <sighs> He's also said that Herbert is a a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. So shit, he got the numbers for it. Like Philip Rivers, <laughs> that man is a great check down king. Anyways, yeah, um, how's Philip Rivers spot in the uh, Hall of Fame right now? He's not up for voting yet, but hold wait on, a few hold more on, years hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. Are you, I want you to say this. Do you believe Philip Rivers isn't a Hall of Fame quarterback? Yeah. Oh, I do. Maybe not first ballot though. Huh. This isn't. This isn't the main. When did anybody turn the NFL into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame? <laughs> There's not standards. They can just knock on anybody's door. What are you talking about? Like, it's there's a one group one championship and things. That's all that matters. Yikes. Okay, Nick Foles, Hall of Famer. Ah, we're coming soon. Uh, so we are replacing the top ten list. Uh, there's going to be a question. There will probably be a tier list next week to kind of pick and choose where everybody goes. A lot of people sent in the rankings. There was not much difference. So I don't feel like it's a fun conversation when everybody agrees and co-hosts kind of just making it for content at that point. So I didn't want to do that segment either. But I do have a question. We will go around. We will kind of determine to fill that time. Winners and losers. Um, I'm going to start with mine because, again, my show, I do what I want. Um, Winner. Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, reason why? Oh, I hate that. Um, they made the change, and I think I said on the show. I think Robert also said on the show. Um, I believe for the long haul, Russ was the better option for the passing game and like game management and awareness and everything else. I understand Fields was not playing bad to get the job taken away from him. But this could have been a total egg on your face moment for taking him out. They replaced it. They went with Russell Wilson. Great offensive game all around. They seemed ready to play. There were some miracle catches, some yards that were pretty much like saving from other people. But like, I don't think the Jets are a slouch on defense. And they put up a good amount of points. So uh, that would be my take on that. Um, they're not a slouch on defense. What are we talking about? They allowed 37 points. That's what I'm saying. They've held other teams to lower. They've held Josh Allen to lower numbers. And Mr. Unlimited for Nazario went in there and did I said, I, I don't think the Jets are good. I think the Jets are a dumpster fire at this point. I think they're bad. Now... Uh, we've all the witch doctor and the like the juju master is sitting there with Rogers and we're all gonna look at the end of the season and if they were all like nine like ten and seven nine and eight I ain't shocked by any means that they were able to pull it out of their hat I just am not but um I think that could have looked really bad on their face. Um, he made it work. So that's why I give the Steelers the, the pass on that. Uh, my loser's a little interesting. There are two, and I don't know either person's name, but I can describe them for you. 
One was the uh, Minnesota Vikings DB that literally Gibbs uh, put into a blender, and uh, he could. I've never seen somebody just frozen on the field, just stare at a guy and put his two arms to try to touch a guy and get nothing. Um, Cause Gibbs was just like bouncing down the field, like happy to be there. And number two was number six for the 49ers that got completely trucked by Patrick Mahomes in the, he should not be allowed on the bus. Malik Mustafa. Yeah. Malik Mustafa, that poor bastard. I would hate to be in the game film to watch Patrick Mahomes just brace for impact. And when he was still standing and look over the guy like, bitch, what? Loved it. Um, but those two were just funny ones. My main one is the 49ers. Um, that division sucks. But they don't have an identity to save their life right now. They just lost... They lost Ayuk. I think he's done for the season. Torn ACL and MCL. <laughs> hey, we're Robert. Dodged a fucking bullet on that one, buddy. Let's just say that. Yes. Leg's not supposed to bend that way. Pneumonia yep. for the other one. Uh, again, <laughs> one. Purdy was... I, I don't believe the Chiefs should have been able to wear any red. And I don't know if that's possible because Green Bay just made a solid white. But Purdy got really confused on Sunday. He just saw red and just said, you, and these interceptions were terrible, like bad. The Chiefs are the most frustrating team in the entire NFL to like be there, but their defense is so freaking good that Patrick Rose could never throw a touchdown. He can just get you in the end zone, hand the ball to Hunt, and they're going to win, and they held him to 12 points and just suffocated them the entire time. Um so I don't know how I think the 49ers were like the odds on favorite from the um maybe the Lions, maybe some Green Bay different scenarios. Um to be the front runner. They're facing a nine and eight season at this point. They they have lost all talent. They're all lifeless. Their defenses are exhausted because they're always on the field because their offense can't generate movement. So uh they're the clear losers. I, I'm so lost. At, like, they should win. They're not winning. It's October. They did the stretch, but this stretch has gone on. What are they now? Three and four? Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's only going to get worse because those interdivision games are going to be harder for them to play because they just don't have the weapons. And, like, them talking about, by the way, Tom Brady, get the fuck out of the booth. Gosh, I can't stand him. Like, how Greg Olson got demoted down is just a disgrace to football. I understand he won seven Super Bowls, but he drives me absolutely crazy. He went on a podcast this week and goes, "Yeah, when we beat when we beat uh, the Chiefs, we were able to handle the defense pretty well." Bitch, it ain't the same defense. It's not even close to the same defense. The only thing the same is Chris Jones. What are you talking about? I was so frustrated, but I digress. Everybody on my two winners. Um, yeah, I mean. No, go ahead, Rob. 49ers schedule coming up after this Cowboys game. Bucks, which looks a little better because of the travesty that was last night. Um, Seahawks, Packers, Bills, Bears. They better hope that they get to five wins at least, or they're going to be in trouble. There's also a Lions game in there coming up. So, yeah, I mean, Ricky Pearsall, Ray. They might have to make a trade for a receiver, which is hilarious that everybody's receivers seem to be going down, and now everybody's in the trade market. Let's and, get Cooper and the two targets moved last week where they could have maybe snuck them for less. Now the prices just went way up. Yeah, so that makes all the sense in the world. Um, it's sorry. fun to see the Niners be whiny, pissy bitches again. Um, no, seriously, like anytime they start losing, like your head start- coach. Hey, look, my head coach won't, you know, throat punch Patrick Mahomes. No, but he'll uh, throw punch his own fans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just nice to see the, the Niners absolutely collapsing. It's sad to see why. Um, it's really not. But, 
You know, you're right. Fuck them. It's not. Um, and the Steelers, I'm happy to see the Steelers being as good as they are right now. Um, George Pickens looks like he's the second coming of Lynn Swan. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just because you were alive for Lynn Swan, but what are you talking about? <laughs> no, literally, I was Lynn talking to fam- I was talking to family who are all from Pittsburgh yeah. Steelers fans, and they and they were like, "Wow, he looks like Lynn Swan out there." And That's like, like me sitting I, around I, my grandpa, and somebody. I'm hits pretty sure board. that was not because of his skills in the field. That's <laughs> like when I watch football with family, and they hit a long home run, and they're like, "Just like Big Mac, man, look at that home run." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're from St. Louis, but what the fuck are you talking about? Like, Just like Tungsten Armo Doyle back in the early 1920s. <laughs> ah, Babe Ruth, man, he's back in the game. <laughs> Whatever happened to that Lou Gehrig? Back when men were men. <laughs> Swan. That is one of the cr- not Heinz Ward, not <laughs> like just just give me Lynn Swan, man. Did, did they also the say that Najee Harris looked like a young Larry Zonka? <laughs> <laughs> I thought most, Walter Payton was back up. That's the, the most Facebook coded, people. I think, response I've ever heard you say. Gosh, that's so funny. But um, go ahead. Uh, sorry, um, I cut you off. It's, it's. I mean, for the for the Niners, this is what happens when you choose to invest in in the wrong things. You know, you have a receiver who hasn't broken out at all in the course of his career. You give him all this money, and then he stinks halfway through the year, and then his knee decides to go the other way, and now you're tied to him for four more years and X amount of million dollars. Same thing with Debo Samuel, who can't stay on the field. You pay him X amount of million dollars to not play for you. And, you know, if you're Brock Purdy, you're sitting around like, these these are the guys my team is paying, and these are the guys that might be the reason why I'm playing somewhere else in two years. Like, is this, is this really? Is, is this it? So it, it sucks that injuries have befallen them, but this is what happens when you – tie money to players who cannot be reliable for the money that you pay them. Um, as far as Pittsburgh is concerned, it was a win-win, I think, for them regardless because the Jets stink. Either one of the quarterbacks will be able to put up, put up 30-plus points. So I have a, I, I think Russ looked good, but I have a hard time believing that, that Sunday night was any kind of barometer as to which is the right guy going forward, personally. Mm-hmm. Mark, anything? Or do you want to move on? Um, no, I mean, yeah, 49ers, yeah, they're, I don't know, they're not good. Nazario, I don't know why Nazario's not here. It's dumb. Uh, yeah, I mean, Steelers, yeah, even though, yeah, either, yeah, the Steelers, either they're for real or they're about to go on a really epic losing streak to get back to uh, 8 and 9, 9 and 8. Yeah, um, I'm going to save Barr for winner and loser just to see if he got the, the test at this time done. Um, I'm going to go to Mark next. Um, Hopefully Coho doesn't join in the time where it just moves you down and you two can have a battle of who can pick the worst winner. My God, you give me an advantage this week. An advantage? You just said Lynn Swan. I gave you the ball, I gave you the ball and then you decided to go back to the – the classic <laughs> NFL. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Here? Oh, that is okay. no Don yeah. Shula. <laughs> Don Shula. Uh, yeah, I'll just start one because honestly, I think the winner is a little tough this week. Uh, I'll just, I'll just say the Commanders. You know, uh, Jade Daniels left the game early. Looks fine. Also, probably a rib injury, which rib injury. It's mostly paint management. Like <laughs> they really- knew who they were playing and said, "Nah, yeah. we're not there, risking." There's no this point at all. in risking it. Yeah. Hey, it's nice that the Commanders did learn when they didn't need to extend a quarterback into playing for too long, and they could <laughs> sit him out so his leg and ribs don't do awkward like movements. That's great. I mean, Dan Quinn's seen this movie before. Okay, we're we're, we're good. Yeah. yeah, it's like like Requiem for a Dream. Once is enough. Unless you're Jack Pinchuk. <laughs> oh. But yeah, you know, they 
they still it, it's the Panthers, but they still put up forty points with yeah Marcus Mariota. Yeah, they they look like the real deal. Probably gonna still the team in the driving driving seat for the uh, NFC East. Uh, losers, honestly, like is maybe this is probably one of the easiest week to pick a loser. Yeah, you can just throw a dart and like oh this team is a big fucking loser. This person's a big fucking loser. I mean. Because, like, I'm the guy, like, who somehow has become the person propping this team up, I feel like I have to pick them. I feel like I have to pick the Jets because they they look like shit. And there's no good reason for them to look like shit. You know, they they have all the right pieces now. I mean, sure, the line's not amazing, but, like, they're all there. And then they made this big trade for Devontae Adams. We think, oh, man, this is going to change. And you know what? not not much has changed like you know i don't i don't like it's like you, you we don't even know what to make of this team anymore i mean i i was curious i looked back last year like at the end of week eight the jets were four and three they had zach fucking wilson they had a winning record they looked worse this year it does and like they got rid of robert solid thing oh maybe this will fix everything they look fucking worse now the defense looks bad like what, what is going on here like I, I don't want to be like the the uh, Jets fan with no hope. But, like I don't even think I'm a Jets fan, but I feel like I'm going through it as much as they are at this point. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what was your uh, What was your loser? The, the Jets. Yeah. The Jets. Jets. Okay, just making sure. Oh, Sorry, there was a yeah. challenge in uh, melee. Sorry, I had to. Oh, okay. So, oh. Um, we're good. Um, no, uh, Commanders, great winner. I think that's fine. Uh, Jets, yeah. It's a bad deal <clears throat> um, overall. Um, I cursed that team a long time ago. Me and Mark, like, kind of like, yeah, we think, like, maybe. It's a bad deal. It's an overall bad deal. Um, it makes no sense why they're bad. It makes zero sense. They were a seven to ten, ten team last year with Zach Wilson. They're on the same path or worse with Aaron Rodgers. It makes zero sense. And it's not Rodgers' fault they're playing bad. He's not helping overall the situation up too much, but like it's it's it just doesn't make any sense. The math is not mathing. Like the odd defense was strong. I just don't. I just don't get it. Zero get. It. Well, they have, no, they have no. They have no. It would help if we knew who to blame. I'll just say that it would really. Ah. But he's not even calling the plays anymore. So I don't even know what's happening anymore. Joe Douglas. Like Rogers has been in it enough times. Why don't he just run the offense? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> It, if you can't do something after 40 years, like 20 years or whatever, it's not 40, he's 40. This is 20 years. What's the point of having that? That's back that's back when he and Lynn Swan were great friends. <laughs> Shut up, old fart. But yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's not good when your your interim coach can't even throw a challenge flag. Um Butterfingers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the Jets look really bad. Mark actually took the stat that I was going to bring up about how with with Zach Wilson, they were four and three. Oh my God. That team is a mess. Um, And the commanders, like, yay. I I, I knew Quinn was going to be a good coach. Um, So So, good for them. I'm I'm happy to see them succeeding post Snyder. So that's nice. That's big of you, Bar. I like it. Um, so there's a couple reasons why the Jets are not as good. Uh, they have, like, Sauce and then nobody else in the defensive backfield because they're all hurt. And more people got hurt on Sunday. It's kind of shitty. Uh, they let a bunch of good under-level linebackers go um, because they were hoping Hassan Reddick would solve their problems. And he's back in the building now, but it doesn't solve the previous seven games. Um, and maybe there's something to be said about Aaron Rodgers. He's not the problem on the field, but maybe he casts a weird dark aura around this team that they cannot eclipse that shadow. Yeah, maybe that's the dark lord. 
Mm-hmm. And then from the winner side, I was going to do an offensive coordinator version. I'm going to switch up when we get to me. Uh, I was going to say Cliff Kingsbury was, I mean, he's proven that it's not a Jaden Daniels thing. I know, again, it's the Panthers, so you can take a little grain of salt. But, you know, Marcus Mariota could come in and throw darts and the system works. So good for good for Cliff. Went to Thailand for a year, got everything out of his system, came back stronger than ever. Old Trisco to Thailand. Um, um, okay. Did you already give your loser? Did you give your loser, Robert? Or is that no. your winner? No, I haven't gotten. Yet. Well, go ahead. Uh, so, since I'm not going to do the offensive coordinator version, I'm going to do the Browns version. They are winners and losers. Um, <laughs> the winner side. How dare you. Is basically the fans slash coaches because they don't have to march to the beat of this drum that they never wanted to be a part of in the first place because of this Deshaun Watson injury um, that the fans were very happy about um, because now they can release the demons. Uh, And my loser from the same team, I'm going to say Miles Garrett, for going in front of the media and indicating about how much of a model citizen Deshaun Watson has been through the entirety of his career. Most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the t- yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's got his finger on the pulse. Defensive player of the year, Miles Garrett. Good for him. Uh so yeah, Browns winners and losers, just depending on what seat you're sitting in. I'm surprised that anybody didn't pick that up to you that point. So that's a really good pick, Robert. Um Knowing that Barr is going to claim that he, that was his, but I don't believe him at all. He was going to pick like the. I was going to do the double. I was gonna no, you, you weren't. No, you yes, weren't. I you're was. Pick, you're going to pick the cashier at the Macy's <laughs> right across the street from whatever. You're not doing it at all. Um, I hate this thing from organizations or even like sports talk people that tell people how to fan. Like, for one. Go fuck yourself. Cleveland should be booed for the rest of their time. They traded off Baker Mayfield, which even fans were like, what are we doing? Like, what? Let's get rid of Baker. He's not the option. They're going to bring Deshaun Watson that nobody wanted facing all these allegations. Then the man's Achilles ruptures like a piano string on fucking a, a nice piano. It is one of the biggest rips of all time, and he is booed. No, no, no. They didn't boo him because he was injured. They booed him at the start of the game, in the middle, wherever. They booed him always. They hated this man. And the the organization was just too prideful to admit they fucked up, made the bad call, made bad money decisions, where they decided last year when they brought in Joe Flacco and he led them to a playoff. And now they're not, they said, oh no, we got to stick to the plan because he's healthy. He just had soldiers. We're going to bring him back. And then when they're not performing well, you're upset that they're angry. Do you know how much money it costs to go to a sports game? Like, F yourself. And <laughs> sorry, sorry, Miles Garrett. I don't know if you're the the morality police when you literally took off your helmet, uh, took off the helmet and decided to try to kill a man on national television Mason Rudolph like, like that's not what we do we also don't try to murder people you psychopath so I'm happy because like I, people like we don't root for injuries we don't that's a lie I root in for injuries for the New York Yankees my entire life, and I will continue. I hope Aaron Judge runs into a wall every year and breaks his toe. I do not care what that makes me as a person. I hope I'm watching when Garrett Cole's arm goes and hits the backstop. I don't care. I do not care. They're the mortal enemies. I hate them. So don't tell me why I can't root. For- no, they're human beings. Don't care. They signed up for the Be the Evil Empire. I hope that the Emperor dies at the end of Star Wars. I hope that team dies too. It's even it's easy. So do not tell that fan that they can't boo when his leg goes. They should have cheered. They should have celebrated. They should have shot off confetti cannons. Like, 
shut up. Like he he's happy. He's never wanted to play football since he signed that guaranteed contract. So what are we talking about? He hasn't you can't tell me this guy that came from Clemson that had all the talent in the world has forgot how to play it because he loved massage parlors too much. What the fuck are we talking about? And then the most Cleveland thing of all time, a man accused of 20 allegations of massage parlor. We're going to give him 245 million guaranteed nothing out. And he's going to sit there and be like, yeah, I guess I still want to play football. No, you just made him a quarter of a million, a billionaire. You idiots. He did he's the math. The, how many, how many massages? He's going to Thailand at the end of the season. I promise you he's going to retire. Like, what are we talking about? Right. Well, I mean, Thailand wouldn't really do well for his, you know, recovering addiction. Well, I hope much. he's on a ship and it goes down. Like, what are we talking about? He's a trash quarterback. Like, he's, he robbed the city of Cleveland. He robbed those others. He did. He should have to do works or something. Like, God, what, is yeah. like, what are we talking it, about? It's Celebrate. funny that the Browns paid him the money that uh, Guardians fans have wanted James Dolan to pay free agents, you know, their entire life. Um, isn't that funny how, how that works? No. Yeah, that's fair. Are the Browns about to structure his contract to be like the next Bobby Bonilla deal? Like they give him a million every year for the next 50 years, maybe? They're going to rewrite favorite. it. So like any kind of federal indictment will just void the fucking deal. I think they have a big insurance policy out there. They're trying to take one out so that it can not go against their cap in the future. Like when they make you a know? move, when film companies make a movie that's so bad that they just submit it to the insurance thing as a total flip and loss. The <laughs> they just drive the John Watson off and drop the ball. You know what's the car also is really... totaled. I don't know what to do with it here. Take it. I don't know. <laughs> you know what's also really bad is that uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson got hurt. Uh, didn't Jameis Winston also get hurt? What? Uh, Why did he go in before Jameis Winston? What, what James was happening? Like the emergency quarterback, apparently, because he was he, he was recovering from kind of some kind of injury. My and bad. They signed, Spinal. <laughs> and now they signed Bailey Zappi, who's going to come in and save the franchise. Well, no, let's not Jameis forget. Is let's not forget that Jameis also has a few skeletons in his closet that are not so different from Deshaun's. So, Crabble? yeah, Philip Browns- Crabble. Well, no, not that, but there was another one from when he was at FSU. So, Brown fans aren't exactly out of the woods yet. I just realized this, not that it will really matter, but I set this for recording instead of live streaming. So, this will be uploaded on the channel after the fact. But So, those two people that watch, they'll just watch. A chance to put a lot of Star Wars. I was wondering why we weren't canceled yet. Yeah, I was like, I'm getting really and that one person just messaged. Yeah. It's like Payson today. He messaged me and goes, you a Costco or a Sam's Club guy? And I was like, oh, God. What the fuck does that mean? And, I was like, like, oh. this and then he's like, so you're neutral? Kind of like the Jaguars? And I was like, what? He's like, you you don't hate them, do you? And I was like, have you seen me on the show? I hate Trevor Lord. What are you <laughs> Weird guy. You'll catch this on the stream. It doesn't really the the three people that watch live, they can just watch it when it goes up and skip to the part where they want to go. We'll be live next week. I thought I was doing TV Chronicles for a second. Um so um uh Scully, winners and losers, because Bar doesn't get to go yet. Well, I have a different Browns winner, and to me it honestly it makes more sense. Nick Chubb. The man comes back from a horrendous leg injury. Didn't know if he, if he was going to play again. Scores a touchdown. And then, you know, his quarterback's uh, Achilles goes bung and just shatters. So now he's the – now he, once again, is now the forefront and the focus of that offense. And to be honest, the Browns were never better when they had Nick Chubb as, at the forefront of that offense. So he now gets to be the primary focal point of that team, of that offense – distracting everybody from all the bad juju that they've uh, absorbed over the last c- couple of years. And he essentially gets his career back, which was pretty much shot to hell this time last year. So he's my big winner. There weren't a lot of winners this week. So if you're not impressed, yeah, I, I, I'm not either. Um, but there are a ton of losers this week. And if I were a Buccaneers fan, 
<laughs> I would want to put, put my face inside the cannon and let Bucky, the bisexual buccaneer, or whatever the fuck that mascot's name is, set it off so it could blow my head off. Because All in, six the span, in the span of like an hour, you lose your the, the best two players you have on offense. I don't know. If you're Todd Bowles, that meeting on Monday morning with Jason Light and the management staff must have been hard to get through because you have to answer for why Mike Evans was allowed to run out there with clearly a worse hamstring than we were led to believe. Why Chris Godwin was still out there in garbage time with less than a minute left, no chance of coming back. I don't care that they got the onside kick. I don't care that they were running down the field at the end to try to make it a, 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 a closer game. Maybe somebody had the over. I don't know. I don't care. But that's the kind of coaching malpractice that gets that 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 sends you on a Greyhound bus to the unemployment office. That's the kind of shit that gets you fired. So I think they were doing some more Canadian fantasy. Of yeah, which I maybe. it came this close. I fucking I mean, I if they and with Evans not back to week eleven, we don't know how long that one's gonna be out. They practically just handed the division to the Falcons. Because they didn't know when to quit. Could you imagine if Carr had stayed healthy? Maybe the Saints could have stuck in here and stole. No, this. they couldn't have. Let's, no, let's the Saints it. proved exactly who they were. As what well. yeah. Dennis Allen is still the head. The coach Cowboys there. are just really, really bad. That's it's kind of bad for the whole NFC, but you're a hundred percent right. Um, I was recording the town hall for melee last night, so I didn't really watch the game uh, too much. I just looked down; it was like thirty four ten, and I was like, "Whatever." And then it showed up to be forty one, and I saw Evans leave, saw Lay go. I mean, I think we all knew this, right? We knew Todd Bowles wasn't a good coach. So, like at the end of the day, like, like I remember, like. I thought I cursed in the opposite way when I said Dennis Allen when he was 2-0 and and he beat the Cowboys and he beat Carolina and they put up 40 spots twice. And I was like, oh, my God, this is going to make me look so stupid. Turns out, no, uh, Tiger Stripes will still show at some point. Like, that's just what it is. I feel so bad because I think a real head coach there can do a whole lot in Tampa Bay. Um, but you basically just ran – like – I know you want to compete for everything. I understand, like, the football players are competitive and you don't want to, like, say that it's not going to happen a certain way. But my viewpoint is, like, going to the Ravens that game, I don't think we're winning that game. Like, we could win that game. I'm not saying you play spoiler. But, like, once they go 34-10, you might want to pump the brakes and, like, just take the loss because what what is it going to be worth? You're also a defensive head coach and your defense – in the span of the last, you know, 17 days has given up 35 points twice and 27 to a rookie quarterback in Spencer Rattler. So clearly the call's coming from inside the house when it comes to Todd Bowles, and it's slowly starting to crumble for him. I also think it's interesting, too, because what is – what the, mo- the, most, the most interesting thing is that you get – um. You win a division that is so weak but with each other. Like, all you have to do is win the division. You don't have to win these crazy games and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I, I agree with you with the, the loser. I think. They and lost there's no the reason for you to be scheming up these plays that puts your receivers in danger because, I mean, I mean, you don't throw the ball to the middle of the field where three defenders can crunch your best player remaining. Like, that's just inexcusable. I feel horrible for Godwin. This is a this is a contract year. They fucked him on the contract. Like good for you know, Baker's had a great year, but he he put him in a terrible position. And I feel like Baker should pay off some of his like medical fees and whatever. I mean yes. Baker threw them back in, into the game. I mean we but at the end of the day, coaching is is the big is the common denominator for all these mistakes. So sneaky I'm more inclined to, to blame them. Sneaky winners, Jalen McMillan and Trey Palmer. Good for them. They're going to get a lot of run. And that's what our fantasy teams hope. Yeah. 
Rashad White back from the dead. He can catch like 15 passes now. Again no, he'll score good. like five points next week, and Sean Tucker will have like 28. Well, they're uh, literally back, what the Patriots catch a lot of passes. They're the Patriots' um, running back system. Like you don't trust it. Like it could be anybody on any given week. You just never know. Bucky um, Irving just might be Sony Michelle in drag. We don't know. Um, do I? Oh, go ahead, Bar. Uh, I was just going to say that um, I think that it, it it's such a disappointment that like Mike Evans finally gets his 100th touchdown and then just rips uh, that, that muscle, that tendon. Um, yeah, the hamstring. Um, and... Then immediately, Chris Godwin foot looks like a twister spinner. Um, yeah, that's that's just so disappointing. Uh, what nineteen fifties toy is that? <laughs> He's remembering think, his his childhood. That's what I'm saying. Oh, like, to come back to take like some of these blows. It you are you are literally our Lee Corso. Like we pass it to you, and like oh. <laughs> I got lost in the lights. Did we win the war? Like, what the fuck? Barwin Co. Not, like, not, not so fast. <laughs> not so fast. Um, uh, I also no bulldogs. Not I so also fast. think it may not be out of the realm of possibility that the Buccaneers trade for Cooper Cup. Um, I cry. Yeah. So. Dude, mm-hmm. Baker, Baker and Cup, that's a dangerous white boy combo right there. Yeah, it sure is. Every that's gap so store within the greater Tampa area. <laughs> <would be crazy. laughs> that tractor supply company is going to be in shambles. Do I wait a little bit longer for Coho to arrive or do I let Bar go? Bar, go ahead. No, give go us ahead. Wait. I dare you. No, give uh, us your winners and losers since they already took like three of them. Actually, no. All three of my winners are still on the board. So, um, and I think the one I'm going to go with is, I think I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson. Um that dude is on an MVP run again, and I don't think anyone had more fun playing football than Lamar Jackson did that game. If you see him just cackling as he's playing, um, plus now he's got Derrick Henry to like clearly take some of the running load off of him, and I don't think there's a happier quarterback in the NFL right now than Lamar Jackson. Um and now they've won what was it four games in a row? Uh, yeah, that dude, that dude's, that dude's winning right now. Um, losers this week. <laughs> what the, what I say? What I do this time? Nothing, man. <laughs> no, they were just they were just uh, despondent to your hip lingo. That's all. You just you just made them it's go a and big load. Just a big load. You're good. My loser this week is Joe Shane. Um, like who? The Giants, Giants GM. Yeah. Uh, J- just this what? week. <laughs> well, this week in particular. Why? What is this? Gets what, closer to why, is new he, why is he the loser for this week? Because he he's the one who went. Mm, we're gonna give all of our money to Daniel Jones and let and basically just like undermine Saquon and he walks and then Saquon has like the game of his life against them in their home stadium, whereas Daniel Jones hasn't thrown a touchdown in MetLife in what like six hundred something days. Like the rest of the organization loved Saquon Barkley. Joe Shane was the one who was like, I don't know if we're gonna pay this guy. And then he lets him walk, and he just like runs rampant in their own house. I just hate you. Like I hate doing the show with fans because no, they're not a loser for letting Saquon walk. They're not. He had injury issues that have happened multiple times when he was under the team. I don't believe not he was in like the two years leading up to that. I think I shut your mouth. 
I think that he had, I don't think, how many a thousand yard seasons did he have under in the Giants uniform? Oh, you mean like behind that awful offensive line? Okay, thank you. So why put $15 million on a back that you can't protect and can't open up the field just because you like the guy? It was realistic to let the man walk. Like, what are we doing? Yes, Daniel Jones is not the best quarterback, and I don't, I'm not defending the signing. He signed him for four years, 160. Only of that was $80 million guarantee, which I don't know if anybody, everybody picks this up in the chat every fucking time. But do you know what the going market is for a starting quarterback in the NFL right now? Do you know the price point that is? Two, it got 50. 40, 50, now it's almost $60 million for quarterbacks. So 40 million for a guy that one, maybe tank enough to get a better quarterback, or two, came off a playoff win. This reason why he signed that contract. It wasn't that he he wasn't the bad quarterback the next year, and then they signed him. They signed him after he beat Minnesota in the playoffs and took them to the playoffs. And we all agree that that year Minnesota was a fraud playoff. It doesn't game. matter. It does not matter if you're a fraud or not. You to win the game, he, he had prime time problems. To win the game is enough. So to pay him forty million or fifteen, where we've learned in the NFL that running backs are a dime a dozen. Guess who else won a playoff game? Trevor Lawrence! <laughs> okay. Can anybody tell me, can anybody do the math? What is uh, what is Trevor Lawrence getting paid per year right now? What is his new contract? Two months. 54. 54 a year? I think something like hey, that. Hey, Barr, 54 million. If you take 14 million off 54 that's 40 million dollars so trevor lawrence is getting paid saquon and daniel jones money thank you for making my point even more but i'm saying he got that contract by not turning the ball over and leading his team to the playoffs so you're saying you would sign trevor lawrence for 40 million yes as a starting quarterback yeah you, no you're a lot you're lying to yourself no 100 percent well, but the amount of shit that you talk on Trevor Lawrence? Yes, but I'm telling you, like at the at the realistic point, I would still I would sign a quarterback if you gave me a budget of 40 How million years dollars. early? Huh? Like a whole year early? Do you know they can get out of that contract this offseason? So now they don't have to pay Saquon 15 million, and now they don't have to pay Daniel Jones 40 million anymore. So what are you talking about? You're saying like you're saying this because he's an eagle. But guess what? What is your record right now? I'm not eagle? saying this. No, is, what is your record no, as the eagle? No, I'm not saying that uh, this is your record right now as the no, eagle. I'm, no, 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 no. You you threw something at me. Let me defend it. I'm not just saying that because 100% you are. If he was a 49er and he did that, I would say the exact same thing. Well, then you if just don't fucking, understand if when. If he was a fucking Cleveland Brown, I would say the exact goddamn thing. Okay. That's so don't so, throw that at me. That's a dumb. That's a dumb topic. But my question is, what is your record right now? I think we're f- four and two. Four and two. Four and two, and one of those is in the hands of Saquon Barkley that cost them the game. No, that's because Nick Sirianni doesn't know how to kick up. No, he field. dropped the ball. I don't know what you're talking about. So at the end of the day, yeah. But did you, did you see what else he did throughout that entire fucking game that he played against the Falcons? You know that K- Kenneth Gainwell has gotten snaps under center. Like, what are we talking about? You're saying, and then like, Paris Campbell was our biggest wide receiver at one point. Who was the running? Who was the running back on the Giants this past Sunday? Tyron Tracy. Tyron Tracy. How many yards did he get? I don't fucking know it, that. Yeah, he didn't have a season. he didn't have a good game this week. Yeah, the Philadelphia D line was so much like. So guess what? If Saquon signs a $15 million deal, guess what happens in week fucking seven of the NFL? The man has to put his cleats on and stand behind that fucking terrible offensive line of the New York Giants. What the fuck are we talking about? He's not stupid. Guess what? I bet if he's offered $15 million, he still doesn't take it. Because you know what you can do? You can fix the O-line. What? You know what you also could have done? You could have fixed the offensive line. You know what you need to fix the offensive line? The line fucking offensive line. The money that you pay Daniel Jones with. Money. What the fuck? What what is happening right now? I lost where the point was. 
This is I, the I best kind of tuned out like line. Kevin. This yeah. is the best offensive line the Giants have had in years. <laughs> well, until Andrew Thomas went out. Correct, but it was the best. So, fuck off. <sighs> How is he a loser? He's probably like, yeah, worked. I knew what he knew loser. exactly what was going to happen. Loser. And he also did message. He was supposed to get a counter offer. He never got the counter offer. He signed with Saquon. Yeah, no, no. They they made Saquon an offer. They said you can go out and see if you can get a better one. Saquon yeah. agent came back and said, "This is the offer we got," and we Joe good. Went, and Joe Shane went, "No, I'm good." So he yeah, did a counter offer. We're good. I'd be good. Saquon probably will miss next year. He'll probably tear something. We're we talking. If running backs are dying, you talk dollars. like you're back like two years ago. What? Saquon hasn't been that hurt in the last two years. He missed like maybe four games in the last two years. I mean, paying fifteen million, you want him on the field. And how often was Daniel Jones out? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Forty million is still the, the going market for quarterback. I don't want to tell you. It's the cheap end of quarterback market. How much is Mr. Unlimited getting paid right now in, uh, in Pittsburgh? Well, he gets the one point one million minimum deal. That's a that's a budget. I think that's that that's well. I mean, I buy we, that for a dollar. We have the biggest disparity between what we spend on the defense. All right. So now that we've had Eagle fanboy angry, happy that he got Saquon Barkley. Oh, are we done? Yeah. <laughs> I. I mean, I like the conversation continue why the Giants GM is actually good at his job. I, I still was lost on that. No, I'm saying my viewpoint is, like, I don't get – he's not a loser for not signing him this season. Like, I don't – I why would you put money in – like, Pacheco was a seventh-round draft pick, right? He's a loser this week no. because of what he showed that he lost. It did. Why? But he did. Saquon didn't show up to. No, he was. Then he would be a loser week one. He'd be a loser week two. Like, yes, he knows what he left. But Pacheco, like, for example, was a seventh round draft pick. Running backs you can find now for cheaper. $15 million is a lot to pay for Saquon when you have an offensive line that is made of Swiss cheese. I don't know what you want. Why I'm would you pay thirteen, not fifteen? My bad. Still, I don't care. Pay him seven. Pay a running back seven million and put him out there. Like there are so many quarter like rushing leaders right now in the NFL are probably not a higher like there's people out there that like look at Bijan. Get him to the draft. Draft early on him. Do that situation and then pass him to teams. If you they're probably sitting there like, oh, man, they're a three-year deal with him now. He could go down in the next two and not have a running back. He could have a chub injury where his leg goes and <laughs> makes a question mark on the field. Things are possible, especially with a running back. It's just convenient. You and Coho do the same thing, and, and Scully, that when your team does something important, then you want to highlight your team. And I get that. Please keep me out of this circle of that. No, I swear you're... to God, how many times do I have to say it? I would have said the exact same thing okay. if he was on I don't have any evidence. other team. I don't have evidence of that. Do you know how many times I shit on the Eagles? No. I've picked against them multiple times. Multiple. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're opening a discussion for the panel since Coho has. Uh, um. Uh, so how many teams right now, as we said, can actually win the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. Each person go around, we'll raise a team that we think, and we can either shoot it down, talk about it, or how it works. Um, Should we get our whiteboards out? <laughs> no, okay. we don't have to do that. Um, I think the easy one that we can just dismiss, we can just get out of the way, Kansas City. Has a real shot to win the Super Bowl. Agree or disagree? Agree. Okay. They play like shit, and they're still undefeated. Sucks. Um. The Lions. 
Lions have a real shot. Yeah, yeah. I agree. They beat the uh, team in the conference for me. They're, they're the second best team in the NFL right now. Yes. Uh, I would Ravens. say the Ravens probably after last night's mm-hmm. performance put an exclamation mark on their contendership. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bills, I think. Bills? I think the way the way that Josh Allen is playing, I think absolutely. They're on the lower end, but yeah, I, I, they could win the Super Bowl. Um, I'll say the, I'll say the Packers. I was going to bring up the Packers. I think yeah. Packers are in there. They're, they're a sneaky team to win the NFC. That's five. How? Yep. He's not. How? Do we think the Vikings have a shot? Sure. No. I, I do. Defense. The defense plays as it does. It, it depends yeah. on, on on how they fare in the second half of the season. Like I need to see more more from them. Get Hawkinson back. See what that does. Open up the middle of the field. Maybe they're even better. I think. I think Darnold showed on. Like, I think the Lions made that game way too close. For example, but like because they were playing with their food at one point. I think. But overall, I think it was really weird with how they. Um. um I think it's very weird that they uh, – his blatant throws, like over the middle and stuff, I thought were just I, – I think there are problems with Sam Darnold as an overall quarterback to get them past, like, divisional – like, to playoff rounds. I just don't see how this team down the stretch beats the Lions, beats the Green Bay Packers when needed. Hell, I think the Bears' defense could eat him alive if the Bears get that point because I think the North can all be represented this year. Um, I – I think if he gets the cupcake, but I think AFC NFC championship will be when push comes to shove. And if he I think the North might be the only division in that conference who can logistically get to the Super Bowl. Because I don't think there's anybody else in any of the other divisions who has shown that they have the capability to consistently play at a high level. I mean, I was going to bring up the Commanders. Like, do are we saying Commanders probably? I. Their defense is 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 a, is. We'll see how how they play in the next few weeks because because they have they, they have a couple tougher tests. But I love the defense. Yeah, they traded Emmanuel Forbes and they lost Jonathan Allen. Those are big, sh- and they were bad before they were gone. So, um. Is there any Green Bay? Did we talk about Green Bay yet? Yeah. No, we did, yeah. I, yeah. Sorry. I think, I think the only one left is the Steelers. That's I didn't want to say it because I don't want to say it. <laughs> no, I if, think I, I think they're defense if the if we're gonna make the case that the law that the Vikings can be in consideration. The Steelers have to be in consideration for the exact same thing. I just I just don't think that team has as high of a ceiling as people think. And I think both both quarterbacks have their limitations. Both of those limitations are can be easily exposed by really good teams. So uh, e- even if they win the North and they go into a wild card game against uh or or even, even, even if they win that game and they go into a divisional game against KC or Buffalo or um, oh, Houston. Houston. I don't know. But they could play Baltimore, and they own Lamar Jackson, so that's a thing. Um, well, as- we'll see. We'll see in uh, in two weeks, three weeks. But yeah, or, we'll th- or three weeks. I I trust in their ability to screw with him, no matter what happens. Uh, after the bye week, they get Herbig and Zach Frazier back on the line, and I think they will make a trade for a guy. True. And there's also the the other side of the ball to you know to, to to look at because 
Ravens defense has the ability to contain mobile quarterbacks, as evidence what they did with Josh Allen. So if it's Fields or Wilson, then they're going to be in, in, in for some tough days. I think it would be a defensive struggle, personally, oh, because of because of how they contain Lamar. Typically, the the Derrick Henry of it all will be would be interesting. Um, I if, think if, if they, you can't if you can't get pressure on Lamar, if you allow him to get like two three yards of separation in the pocket, he's going to kill you downfield. I agree. I don't. That's never been a problem for them. They've always been able to get pressure on him. Regardless, so I and right. Cam Hayward's the highest rated defensive tackle this year, which is insane to me at his age, but he is. So if they if they trade for a guy and Russ gets comfortable, he had to knock Russ off. I didn't want to Cody say Bard, it. you see what this is. This this is called having a difference of opinions, but also being cordial and not yelling <laughs> at each other about it. Uh, you can learn. Know. You can learn from us. I know how to make content. I don't know about you. Um... <laughs> Um, I, I I don't believe this, but I'll say it. If the Seahawks get dudes back on defense based on how they're passing offenses, I and if Kenneth Walker stays healthy, that's a great – that's a really, really good offense with everybody healthy. I think they this is like – this Seahawks team is very re- reminiscent of like 2012 Seattle – before they were really, really good, but when they, when they were still like kind of fun and, and frisky, and Russ was and Russ was a rookie, they can have great games. But they can also have terrible games. So I don't think they're consistent enough to reach that point yet. But give it a give it a year or two, and maybe we'll see. They're they're undercooked right now. Like they're like Seahawks aren't good. The, they well, they might win the division this year. But I don't like that's not like a it's not like a big flex this year. So I mean, I'm starting to think if it's any questions that they win the division. Could be like I don't know. Like it's it could be fucking anybody at this point. Car- like, Cardinals are winning are stacking wins they don't deserve. You know to what? Win. That's fair. And the defense is playing a little better. I'm not saying they can win it now because they look ridiculous. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. I, fucking hate you but like just learn how to catch the ball man i thought that was a deal like you can't streak but i thought you could catch apparently you can't uh yeah so i i just brought seattle up because they'll get at least one home game probably and they'll probably win that one against who's ever uh well maybe it's an it'll probably be an nfc north team it'll be not, but it's winning the divi- it's winning the super bowl yeah like how many these teams are making the playoffs a lot of them are but how many can actually I'm thinking if they win, if they can win a playoff game, then that puts them in a good position. Like you had mentioned, the Vikings push comes to shove in the NFC Championship game, and I'm thinking, well, if you can get to the NFC Championship game, that's just one. Yeah, but like if the Seahawks beating the Packers or the Lions right now, or even if they get healthy, no, depends on what kind of game it is. For me, is is what if it's a shootout? Yeah, if if like. Are the Lions going to get a pass rusher? Then yeah, I mean, it's I Jordan Love going to throw three picks. It looks like it matters. Like that, that's the only thing, though. Like it just. Doesn't... I love Mike McDonald, but he is not able to outcoach Dan Campbell, Matt Lafleur, Kevin O'Connell. He's not going to be able to to in a matchup of minds. He's he, he's not there yet. No, but they they have a. Because they can win the division, there's a semi path. I don't believe it. I'm just saying that they're on a list of like below top tier people. Sure. Yeah, so we're, I mean, the Bears and no, I don't know, probably the Broncos, but like I, I wasn't going to bring up the Broncos. Like I'm not, uh, I think like, that's a difference. I, I, I'm still not sold on. The Bears making the Super Bowl. I mean, playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. I think they can definitely do that. Um, I'm not sold on them as a Super Bowl team just yet, though. No. They got pieces. They're a, they're like a year or two away. It's the same situation. Division play starts in in, in a few weeks. It's going it's going, it's going to get fun. Oh, and there he is. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like a foot tall than you. You watch yourself. There's a photo that exists of you being like double white. Anyway, Obi Wan. Um, who can who can win the Super Bowl, Coho? Who can? Yeah. Uh, listen. Uh, I think if there's any teams that can do it, I think the Lions are are poised. They look better. Um, I will fully admit they beat us pretty fair and square handedly. Uh, so they're looking pretty good. Um, the Vikings have to clean something up if they want a chance to do that. So I think there's on on paper there's a chance. I think that chance is slimming. Um, but I would say if there's any team that can win the Super Bowl, like I think the Chiefs are going. So if there's any team to beat the Chiefs, probably the Lions. But even then, Dan Campbell will fuck it up with a stupid fourth down conversion thing again. So. Okay. There's a team we forgot. I forgot. Houston. Oh. If they can get Nico oh, back or they make oh, a trade oh, for a guy. They look good. And, and Ben Slowick can like make some more creative stuff, then they should be included. They still feel a bit away though. I... Yeah, they can't play on the on the road, like at all. <laughs> so they need a one seed, which isn't gonna happen. Uh, I here's my thing with the Texans. I think that Stroud, I like Stroud a lot when Stroud has potential and Stroud's playing really well. I really like him. I think he's had a couple times this year, at least. I mean, everyone's going to point to the couple games they lost. Like the Packers defense kind of caught him a little bit on Sunday. Um, I don't think he's exposed, but there's clearly a path for people to beat CJ Stroud. Um, and I, I don't, uh, yeah, the, the, the path is make your whole city and dress in white and resemble a clan rally. And that works perfectly <laughs> as, as evidence. <laughs> sure. Cause Jesus Christ, you put, up, many people in, in, up, in, you put that many people in white in Wisconsin, you're going to scare every drop of melanin away from the state line. Jesus Christ. That's not even true. Um, believe me. I don't know how big the clan is up north, for one. For, that's that's more of us southern people down here. To be oh, I've been to Wisconsin. There are good people. Second, um, oh god, um, my head's all in a blender now. Uh, I think I do not believe Stefan Diggs will ever win a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's too much of a diva, and uh, I think he's a locker room cancer. To be honest with you, I just don't think he has it. It will, he, when the lights are brighter. I think he'll want the the more attention on him, and I just don't see. I don't see it going going well. Games on the line, not running plays, throwing a fit on the sideline because it's not going his way. Down ten. Four, you know, fourth quarter just starts. He's winding. I'm honestly not surprised. I'm honestly surprised he didn't injure Nico himself and just he probably did. He probably Tommy Hardy was at her ass, just just right in the fucking knee. Um. Okay. Let's get to games. I'm gonna do it a little different this week. Um. I'm gonna mention the game. Okay. We're going to go through everybody, and we're going to just announce our point values, okay? Whoever has a Hyatt, talk while you're taking them for the highest point by that point value. If it's multiple, we'll just write it, okay? So, first game on the slate that we will be talking about. I wish I'd predetermined this shit earlier. Uh, found it. Um, yeah, found it. Uh, the New York Jets are facing the New England Patriots. Um, we'll start with Barr just to list your point. Well, who you got and what point? At the Jets at three. Okay. Uh, we'll go uh, Nazario Jets at six. Um, Mark. I like paying Jets at one. Okay. Um, Robert. Uh, this slate's kind of weird. There's some good games to pick. Uh, I have Jets at nine. Actually, okay. 
Uh, Jets at eleven. They win. Like it would. Jets for eleven. Um, for me. Um, Patriots and Patriots. I'm sorry. I just do. They already. <laughs> they already dusted this team, Briar. I do not. I don't think Drake May makes any difference for me whatsoever. Um, Coho. I'm gonna take the Jets for five. Scully. That man is frozen. That man is frozen. <laughs> no, he's Hold dead. on. I'm back. Sorry. Um, Jets for six. New England is soft, as their head coach says. <laughs> soft as baby shit, man. How many did you say? Six. For Jets? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I put it for the highest. I said what I said. They scored three points the last time these two met. I don't. I think the Jets are bad, but I think they are bad against good teams. I think they can still beat up on bad teams. The pa- the Patriots are a bad team. Whoever the best offensive lineman in the draft is this upcoming season, they are looking to grab him. Whatever it is, that's who they're going. Because I think they trust Drake, man. I think he's good. But at the end of the day, the Jacksonville Jaguars just completely just mop this team. And they're bad. Jets are better. Jets competed with the Bills up until the final second. So um, that's my opinion. Anybody else on logic on this game? I understand why Mark put it for one, but like. I just don't trust the Jets right now. I just don't. But I still think they'll win. They're a better team on paper. Yeah, I, I gave the Patriots too much credit last week. And you know what? Honestly, that's on me for even believing in them in the first place. Um, so no amount of, wow. Thanks, Mark. Um, (laughs) no amount of suckage by the Jets can, uh, can mess this one up. Reddick's back. Adam's another week in the building. They should be able to score some points. That's like saying Jordan Montgomery's back on the mound after signing a four year, $80 million deal. For which one? For the Reddick? For the Reddick part of it? Yeah, well, like let's yeah. see, let's see what effect he actually has. Probably not much, but they probably don't need it. I was playing with a knife and I cut my finger. So <laughs> I, saw, I saw it happen live, so I was just like, "It is like, a bitch." I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck do you do? You can't find your whiteboard, but you got a knife present. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't keep a knife on the table at all times? No." <laughs> I keep a knife hanging on the string. <laughs> like the sword of Damocles. Occam's razor. Um, so next game on the slate, unless anybody wants to talk about this more? No. Yeah, no. Uh, Carolina Panthers going to Denver. Um, I'm getting a phone call. Um, Barr, what's your points? I'm picking the Broncos, but I don't trust the Broncos for some reason. So I'm only picking them for six. Cool. Um, oh, I don't know if Cody's back here or not. I'm back. I'm sorry. Uh, Bar, what did you say? I wish I was listening. I was not. It's okay. Um, I said I'm picking the Broncos, but only for six. I don't. Yes. I don't trust the Broncos that much. Nazario has Denver for eight. Uh, Mark, what you got? Broncos for thirteen. Um, thirteen. Okay. Um, Robert. I also have Broncos for lucky thirteen. I have Broncos for nine. Um, Coho. Uh, uh, I'm just going to take Broncos for eight. Broncos for eight. Um, and Scully. Broncos for 11. Broncos for, all right, so I don't think there's much clarity that needs to be raised on this, but I will let you guys... Discuss why so confident in 13. 
I mean, I think it's pretty simple. Like, the Broncos are a functioning football team right now. And the Panthers just played a Marcus Mariota-led commander team and got fucking torched. So, yeah, like, they're they're probably going to get their ass kicked again. Like, Bo Nix is whatever, but, yeah, it should be enough. It's in Denver, uh, and I and Andy Dalton was just in a car crash. I don't remember what happened to Cam Newton when he got out of his car crash, but I don't think it was good. And Andy Dalton's significantly less athletic. So yeah, man. Xavier Leggett's a good old Southern boy. Um, I don't know how he's going to handle the uh, the um, elevation in Denver. So because <laughs> they're very low to the ground over there. <laughs> Sure. I I think there's anything with Bo Nix and could I see Carolina getting a win that they're not supposed to? Yeah. Could Denver be that team? Yeah. So that's why I'm a little hesitant. Anybody else want to say anything? Cody and I are, you are, we are in lockstep on that. Shit, can I switch my phone? (laughs) This man blames the Giants GM for all their downfalls. Um, Oh my God. All right. Next one on the slate. Arizona at Miami. Bar. Uh, I'm taking Arizona. Hold on. Two is coming back for this game, right? Presumably. Two, yeah, he is. Is he gonna play four? Uh, is he gonna play four quarters? You know that let fucking Sam Boyle play four quarters. God, God, I can't believe we still let Tim Boyle play in this league. Um, I'm still gonna take Arizona, but only for four points. Four points. Okay. Uh, Nazario has Arizona for five. Mark, where you at? Take the Dolphins for six. Okay. Uh, Robert. Uh, you know, Arizona. Because I don't know anything about what this is going to fucking look like for two. I have Miami for two because if Tua plays, that's it. Um, Coho. Uh, I'm uh, going to go with the Cardinals for two. Split, which I think we should be, uh, Scully. Dolphins are four. Two is going to be back. Tyreek's going to be so happy. He's going to just take the ball and run through the entire defense because he'll be so excited uh, because he's known to speed in areas where he shouldn't. Um, so we're going to take the Dolphins for four. Uh, hopefully Tua plays well because I gave up quite a bit in fantasy football to get his ass. He was running late, Scully. I think it's guess very what, hilarious. Guess what? It's running late for, for me to get some fantasy output out of him, so he needs to, to step it up. I think it's hilarious. Like, hey, are you going to wear your Guardian thing? No. Well, fuck <laughs> me. But, like, if I was the owner of that, I mean, fuck if me. Someone like, gave you, like, if someone gave you elephant foreskin to put over your helmet, would you wear it? Yes. If I had that that history if, of concussion. If my fingers did this when I get hit land oh, on the ground, like, you don't, you might need to try it. Like, I know it's not fashionable, but. Your brain is about to be mush. Um, next game on the slate is... I think this is going to be a gross game. The New York Giants are <laughs> going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to reverse the order. I'm going to go Scully first. They may not come back. Um, their, 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 their season might be over. Can't wait to see the gym, uh, the GM, the Giants be the loser I'm, next week. I'm gonna, I don't know why this game is on Monday Night Football. Jill Buck is going to have an aneurysm calling Daniel Jones interceptions. Um, Mr. Jones. He almost had a stroke last year calling uh, Witherspoon's pick of, of Jones in, uh, in Seattle. But um, uh, Steelers for 13. How much? 13. 13. Okay. Coho. Um, 
I'll take the Steelers. Four. I'm gonna do eleven. Okay. Um, I put PYT. Um, that's a <laughs> Michael Irvin call. Um, I'm Wait, doing no. Pittsburgh for ten. Are you calling Coho a pretty young thing? <laughs> it's about to be his birthday. He is definitely not here. young anymore. Um, you should have seen the hat he tried to wear on the town hall last night. Oh, criminal. Criminal. Ooh, uh, smooth criminal. Peaky Blinders. Fuck you, Bar. I got there first. Oh, bitch. You ever seen Peaky Blinders? You oh, wore a hat, Peaky but, Blinders hat? It was that hat, but like green. It was weird. Crazy. Looks like he's going to his old country. Robert. Um, maybe the this is on Monday Night Football because the old football families. Maybe the Ma- Maras will be there. Rooney and Kate and everybody else who <laughs> part of all these families. They'll assume the body of Art Rooney to just put him yeah. in the suit. <laughs> of Art He'd do a better job than Art Rooney the second, probably his corpse. Uh, I'll take the Steelers for fourteen. For thirteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. You already used to thirteen. Should have known that. Sorry. Um, Mark. I, hate I, didn't, I didn't want to pick the Steelers for double digit points, but it fucking happened. Give me the Steelers for 10. Um, Nazario has them for 10 as well. Bar. Pittsburgh going to the Super Bowl. Here we go for 11 points. God, what I would live for an AFC championship game of the Pittsburgh Steelers versus Kansas City Chiefs just sitting there with. Uh, <laughs> I don't want that. Going to the Super Bowl. We'll bring Kirk on. It'll be a whole party. Is um, Chris Boswell going to kick seven field goals and win? And then come into the video store next week. We're going to be doing a Pilots podcast. It's going to be a blast. We'll tell you when they sell at the deadline for the 30th straight year. Um, <laughs> And we'll talk about pierogies and fucking why they put fries and coleslaw in sandwiches. Which one of the three bridges are we going to jump off of? I like it. We why did they put Ferris wheels on the Clemente Bridge? Nobody was here. <laughs> Yellow and the devoid of all other colors. Black. Thank you. We're the Steel City. Move on. Where we still um, call it Heinz Field. <laughs> yes. We believe in ketchup, not to whatever this. F- um, all right. so, fuck. That's my favorite bit. So far. Indianapolis going to Houston. Ba, watch your back. Uh, Anthony Richardson still playing. So Houston Texans for eight. He is terrible. Uh, Houston for <laughs> eight. Yes, for eight. Somebody put in our chat, I think it was Chance Ellison, he was like, I'm starting to think Anthony Richardson is bad. And I was like, um, just now? I saw him play in Florida. I could have told you this. Um, Nazario in Houston for 11. Mark. Your beautiful mustache. Texans for 12. You look like you can bend steel. Um, 12. Um, Robert. (laughs) It's great when you, you're in a super flex league and your first pick is Anthony Richardson as quarterback. It's wonderful. You, you really love it. Really. Those first two weeks were money. Yeah, <laughs> that first week was great. Uh, Texans for eight. Lockstep with Barr. Great. He did that on in nine passes, which was great. Nine completion. Um, I have Houston for 12. Coho. Houston for 12 is also a money. Whoa. Scully. Uh, <laughs> I'm do this voice all episode. almost won uh, week one against the Texans. Somehow he's gotten worse since then. Um, that just seems impossible. Man, what if me. they have like a quarterback like on their bench that was like <laughs> that had led to wins? Know, but but Demetrio Ryan's right might here. actually tackle Richardson himself if the Texans don't win by more than fourteen. So I'm going to take the Texans for nine. For nine points. All right. Um, those crazy Tennessee Titans are taking on the Detroit Lions <laughs> in the Motor City. I the Motor City. Um, Scully, what do you got? Lions for 15. Don't look back. Not even a worth a conversation. 
I can't wait for Will Levis to be on the sidelines. I thought Hate Hayden Hutchinson was out of this game. No, their whole defense can do that to you. Um, I no, threw it to Brian Branch. We're here. I thought Aiden Hutchinson was the only defense player on the Lions. That he, was he's it. he's the only one who who he's comfortable being sacked by. Them. Any thoughts, Coho? Uh, not especially. <laughs> well, I'm really boring at the moment. Uh, so. He's I'll personally like... going through some shit. Back to you at the desk. God, um, this reminds me of when I used to listen to the radio back when Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Before was... I throw it back to Connie at the desk, um, <laughs> you tell me who you got in Tennessee Titans versus the Houston Texans. Uh... And a point value, please. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, yes. <laughs> Would you uh, like to buy a vowel? Hold on. I had it right here. Where am I going? I don't think you did. I had it. Be a point Wait, Tennessee Titans versus, versus the Lions. Lions. Uh, Lions for 15. Listen, say this of, be of that was not the hard part to figure out which right. one you had. I knew you had Detroit. I just All didn't right. know the point value. All right. <laughs> Robert, I know yours too. I just don't know the point value. <laughs> We'll take it to sports and weather. The sky is blue and the pigskin is brown. Ah. Back to you. Uh, I'm taking the lines. My death nail for 16 big points. You can't do that. Six. Do you want to do the weather? Do you want to do the weather? 16. Great. Connie. Wait, Connie hold on. Clark. I thought there's only 15 games this week. There are 16. There's no buys. No buys. We're up here and in the five. Football like man football this week. There will be no people taking timeouts. Connie, also known as Mark, what's your pick? Oh, that's what I was. A... You're my perfect Connie. Perfect balance. Thank you. We're going to keep that. You'll be the lead of the, you'll be my co-host for this Pittsburgh Pirates podcast we're starting. <laughs> You learn. I need you to learn about O'Neill Cruz. Get it together. Cabrian Hayes in third. Oh my God. I don't. I don't want to learn all this useless yeah. Pittsburgh trivia. Sorry, you're yeah. signed in. You're gonna love Paul. You can just talk about how pretty the yeah. park is. It's a give, me the li- give me the Lions for fifteen. We can move on. Hey, I also have the Lions for fifteen. Forgot to can mention. I ah! the, the, hold on. Can I change mine to sixteen, please? Because you didn't understand math. That's fine. If there was an app that told you what number, you must not be from Pittsburgh. Bar. Hey, we're up here in Air 5 looking down at... We would definitely not hire you to fly in a helicopter for weather or traffic. What is your points? Well, I already got my license, so that was a waste of money. Uh, (laughs) Detroit for 15. 15. Oh, well... We're going to get a sandwich later. Um, Ooh, we're going to go to Premier. fries please. out of the sandwich, you fucking weirdos. <laughs> but we're so busy, we got to get back to the steel plant. We're going to eat it together. Um, Green Bay is set to murder the Jacksonville Jaguars in Florida. Um, bah, what do you got? I've got Green Bay for 14 points. Nazari has them for 13. Mark, what do you got, Connie? <laughs> well, the Jacksonville Jaguars going across the pond for a road game. <laughs> we are still back, baby. Here, the pack is for 16 points. <laughs> baby, bud, my lord. Why did you turn into Bane at the end? <laughs> hey, no, accents are not for everybody. It's fine. My wife still struggles to. Defend no. Steelers! Defend your city! <laughs> I didn't know the darkness till I put on this <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers jersey. Um, Robert, what? I didn't uh, know winning till Aaron Rodgers left. <laughs> your guys' Pittsburgh accents, by the way, spot on. I felt like I was back. That's called 40 years of inhaling smoke. From the, old steel <laughs> From the steel plants. Thank you. I took the Duquesne incline all the way up to Mount Washington. What did I see? Oh. Bridges and water. That's the harm of environmental <laughs> regulations by our all liberal that government. All steel and no pollution. How is it possible? It's only Pittsburgh. It gets filtered out to Cleveland. Um, Don't worry. We're going to go to his sheets later. 
Oh. All right. Get <laughs> sorry. sorry. Packers for twelve. I was thank you. I'm gonna have him for thirteen. Coho. Uh Packers for fourteen. I love when he wakes back up. It's my favorite. Uh Scully. Like, don't wake Daddy. Uh, we're gonna go with the Green Bay Packers for 14 points. Did you say daddy? <laughs> not you talking to Barr. We're not talking about Caleb Williams. What so did no. I tell you about hiring that drunk to fly that helicopter? All right. Um we're gonna go to the New Orleans Saints, uh, not affected by a hurricane, uh, versus the <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Scully, what do you got? Saints and Chargers, you say? I do. Chargers for eight. Oh. Um, Coho, if you're awake, I tell me think a bit. I don't trust the Chargers or the Saints. Uh, so I'm just going to say the Chargers for one. I have the Chargers for five points. Um, Robert. I thought we were going down to New Orleans having iced tea on a bowl. I definitely Sunday wasn't afternoon. doing no that's Cajun a... accent, I'll tell you about Yeah, I thought no, that's I where we were it. going with Sc- where Scully was going. I thought we were well, kids, was Mama was wrong again. I think I would just sound like the Firefly from Princess and the Frog. Like, <laughs> that. That's what I'd be able to do, do I know that about it. I got about Boucher. I don't know. Remember that time Baba Boucher by Dead Bell? Remember when Joe Montana came in play quarter? Joe Montana was a Montana quarterback. Idiot. Joe Montana was a quarterback. It's my favorite guy. It's the are best. Gonna, are you going to eat that? Ew, now I'm not. <laughs> um, I just the best, one of the best field goal kickers. He was number one this week in fantasy. Good for Cameron Dicker. He's the only guy who can score. Yeah, I picked him up in one league. He got me he won. Yeah. Dicker the kicker. Dicker the kicker. Um, Chargers for two. <laughs> Chargers for what? Seven. Seven. Mark, what you got? I hate them. I'll take the Chargers for nine. Big Cat put a future on him for 40 and 1 to win the Super Bowl, and they lost to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, it was really funny to watch. Uh, Barr, what do you got? Uh, you know, I originally had this game for 10 points, but I, I moved it down to 7 points for the Chargers. <laughs> Conservative, I like it. Um, oh, God, what games? What games? <laughs> Um, we'll pick uh, Coho's love. Maybe get him a little engaged, get him a little fired up. This has got to be like watching mm-hmm. just two favorite teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. two sexy things on the screen. He he likes both possessions of the ball this week. Uh, Minnesota going to the Rams. So I'm gonna take the Who Rams. Rams might be back. Okay. Uh, I am gonna take the Vikings. I'm gonna take them for thirteen. I don't see. The Rams offense doing anything against the Vikings defense. But uh, if this was another game, they have a shot. Um, hey, if it's the Niners, I'll take the Rams. Let me tell you. Tell me what I might do. Who? Scully. Uh, yeah, Vikings for 12. That's if uh, Stafford isn't wearing a purple jersey uh, by the end of the game. It's not happening and it's not real. Stop it. Yeah, you so would that, that, Matt Stafford in Minnesota would look like fucking Now I want Brady. it to happen because you're so against it. You would cream in your britches if that did happen. Listen, Stafford um, in Minnesota would look like Tom Brady. It'd be beautiful. Um, I have the Vikings for 16 points. Because I would love to lose this game and for them to drop another one. But if I don't believe so, I think they will win. Uh, I saw uh, – listen, you can say that Branch jumped that route. That was one of the worst thrown balls that you can throw in that situation, and he threw it. Like, he didn't even see Branch. It was terrible. Uh, Robert, what do you got? Uh, Cup says he hears the rumors, but he's just going to try to be the best L.A. Ram he can be. Puka, he doesn't want to lose his big brother. He's not going to lose him, I guess, for this week. Uh, that'll be next week, probably. Uh, it doesn't matter, though, because I have the Vikings for time. Okay. Mark. Uh, Vikings. We're eleven. 
Okay. Uh, Nazario has Minnesota for one point. Um, bar. <laughs> that's that's. And I think it's his Thursday night strategy. I don't think he feels a certain way for it. Oh, it makes them all one. That's fair. Um, I give me the Vikings for twelve. I think this is. I think Sam Darnold still looks good, but I think that this is probably maybe the last week that he does. Whoa. Okay. Shots fired. Um. I've seen this movie. The Battle of the Mid. Dallas Cowboys versus the 49ers. God. Bar. This is an ugly game. Oh, and it's the night game. The Sunday night game. That's yes. fun. Uh, the 49ers have had the Cowboys numbers. And I don't think the Cowboys are good enough. But I'm only going to pick the Niners for five. Oh, I just totally blanked. For nine? <laughs> five. 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 I need to quit drinking. Uh, Nazario <laughs> has the Niners for only three points. Uh, Bad weeks it does. Mark uh, has... Like... What is the NFL doing to us? Why are, we, why are they making us watch this fucking game? Like, why is this I the mean, fucking premier game? Before the season started, this would be a game that we. It would, would have been a nice game. Yeah. I get it, but this is fucking week eight. They can't just plan ahead and, like, hey, actually, we're just going to switch shit around. Like, come on, you can do that. Nope, like, it had to be gonna... week nine. Then like, it had to be <laughs> Eagle Jags. Like, you know, I get, you know, Pittsburgh and New York, you know, that's Monday. We can't really do anything about that. But come on, like, we can make, you know, some. We can do some shit with this. Like, whatever. Like, give me San Francisco for two. It's stupid. Watch it. Well, what do they just flex out? Philly and Jacksonville? For yeah, they flex out two? For, for Vikings and Colts. And Colts. What the Great. fuck? Is, isn't that the same? Matt? Thank you. Like, it doesn't matter. It's the same don't game. Compare, don't compare Minnesota to Philadelphia, please. Whoa. I mean, they've won a championship. I don't know about you, buddy. And they've been to a Super Bowl. Yeah, um, your coach doesn't sit there and yell at the fans. Like I don't, I don't give two shits. I don't like Philadelphia. You have a mustache. Shut your face. Um, Mark, did you have for two points? Yes. Robert. All right, get out of my head. I don't like it. I don't like you in there. No. <laughs> yeah, don't make that face either. <laughs> I have the 49er. I, I, I think the 49ers, regardless who's on the team, will come alive against the Dallas Cowboys, and I think they'll be able to run the ball very effectively where they couldn't do against the Chiefs. And the um and I think I just think the overall defense doesn't tell you a whole lot. I think Dallas is that bad. So but I only am for six points because I'm really unsure. Um Cole. I stared at my dog because she's whining. Um, she was. Probably because you got to pick this game. Hey, fucker, don't rush me, Scully. Dumb bitch. Um, remind me, what am I picking? <laughs> <laughs> As someone who has don't to work rush me, bitch. Time, <laughs> <I'm really laughs> <laughs> I think Mark, I think Mark Jackal, and that's all I care about. Um, okay, seriously, though, what am I picking? Dallas Cowboys taking on um, a little team known as the 49ers. <laughs> did you see him perk it's up during the Minnesota uh, game but did not realize where we were on anything? Like He heard Minnesota got right, right back in and got out. Like, uh, I'm taking the Niners for seven. Thank you so much for your service. Um, you. Scully. Popped up, bitch. Hurry up. Uh, I'll take the Niners for one because I can't spend more than two brain, dip brain cells thinking about this game. You know what? That is actually one of the smartest picks that you did all game. And I just I'm, I'm going to go to bed early. I'm, I'm going to get an extra few hours of sleep. And uh, Who the fuck are you? I have to wake up at 6 a.m. I don't morning. give a shit, but you're changing. No, sorry, you are, and I don't need this. Because... <laughs> If it was Sunday night, we would be playing. If the Red Sox were in the World Series, we'd be in the World Series talk. And you're going to go to bed? What are you doing? Because it's Yankees Dodgers. I'm going to fuck. I can't wait I'm to protesting watch Shohei. the World Series. I wait, can't wait to watch Shohei just crush. Active protest this year. That's it. Um, next game on the slate Philadelphia going to the Cincinnati Bengals. Bars losers going to be Cincinnati for like not signing Saquon Barkley. Um, but we're going to start <laughs> with uh, Scully. They could have used him. Um, I'm going to take the Bengals for two. Um, 
I, I think this will be a tight game, but it's going to be whichever big name receiver gets more yards, probably. So, yeah. T. Higgins, probably. Okay. Devontae, uh, Devontae might actually have more than like one yard of receiving. Well, let's uh, not go crazy here. Oh ho. We're doing Philly and Cincinnati. I heard you. I'm going to do the Bengals report. <laughs> How much? Bengals report. Literally happened less than five minutes ago where you <laughs> didn't know, and then you tell me I hear you. Fuck it. <laughs> I have Cincinnati for three. Robert, where are you at? Cody, you're never going to get that. Balance right, so just come at him aggressive each time. Maybe you'll get maybe you'll get a nice one. Uh, I also have bagels for three. Get shot for jaywalking. Like, what the fuck? Like, um, my girlfriend, Scully just opened his breath. Like, fuck you, bitch. Like, whoa, what? Uh, Mark, where you at? You know, what? I'm gonna call an audible here. Uh, I yeah, I don't like this game because we're basically playing a test of which head coach is going to lose their game for their team. Um, could be either one. Uh, I will still take the Bengals for four. And, yeah, that'll be that. Bengals for That's four. the end of that chapter. That's it for that. Uh, and bar. Only because, only because I think the Bengals' defense is really, really bad. Uh, I'm picking the Eagles, but I'm only picking it only, only for one point though. Only the reason. The Bengals defense is like really bad, and they lost Geno Stone. Um, Kansas City Chiefs going to Vegas divisional game. Bar, what you got? I'm gonna have to do a lot of scrolling. Why do you uh, have to do that? Hmm? I'm sorry. Uh, I've got a cold. Yeah, so I gotta breathe it in. <laughs> gotta take it in. The essence. Where are we at? What the fuck are we doing? Go ahead. Uh, I have the Chiefs for thirteen. Okay. Um, Nazari has Kansas City for fifty. Bark. That's the vu. Where I've seen that before. Um, uh, Kansas City for fourteen. Yeah. It's whatever. Fucking who's watching this game? Um, Robert. Remember the people around me. Remember when the Raiders like beat them on Christmas? Yeah, I don't. Re- I don't remember that shit either. I think that was a mirage. Uh, so I'm going Kansas City for eleven. Maybe Jacoby Myers will have a big game. Oh God, I hope so. Um, Coho. I'm gonna take the Chiefs for ten. Never a doubt. Scully. Chiefs for seven seven points. It'll be a yep. weird game probably because it's the Chiefs. Okay. Um Buffalo at Seattle. Back to me again. Yeah, we'll just take yeah. it. Um I'm feeling the Seahawks this week for three points. I think it's a toss-up. It could go either way, but I feel like Seattle's got some good momentum after the big win last week. Um, Bills still have a lot of questions on defense, so if Gino can just rip that thing downfield, even without DK, uh, this could be the, the, the JSN breakout game that we've all been hoping for. So I'm going to take Seattle for three. Okay. Um, Coho. I am. Uh, I'm gonna take the Bills. I'm gonna take the Bills. Where did it go? I'm gonna take the Bills for. Hold, please. Uh, nine. Anticipation was killing me. I had Buffalo for seven. I think Buffalo's offense is really good. I think Atlanta shows some holes. I don't think Buffalo will show those home holds. And I think Amari Cooper, the more and more he gets in that offense, the more and more I think he's going to be basically unstoppable for him. Um, I love Coleman's response. Is like, 
never get penalized for over communication. <laughs> like I was just telling him where to go. Uh, uh, Robert. If this was in Buffalo, it'd be really easy for me, but I'm kind of like Scully. I don't care about the no DK as much. I'm, I'm going to take Seattle for one. Seattle for one. Yep. Okay. Um, Mark. Yeah. I feel like we're overthinking this. Um, yeah, Mari Cooper played well. Just mad. Yeah, one more week, you'll probably know the plays. So yeah, give me Buffalo for seven. That's what I'm saying. I, don't, I think they're putting a lot into the Atlanta. Nazario's Buffalo for twelve, so I think he's a little bit more hype. Bar, where are you at? You're muted. <laughs> so angry. That's a 2020 move from Cody. <laughs> I think this is going to be a close game, but I think Seattle's defense is going to be just better than Buffalo's offense, so I'm picking Seattle for two. That's a cra- I did not imagine a lot of Seattle face tonight. So feel good. Gonna, I'm going to catch up. I might have egg on my face at the end of it, but I just don't see it. Right. Um, I'm surprised that not a lot of six teams are sitting here, but maybe divisional game is scaring everybody. I don't know why I let it slip through. I don't even know who the quarterback is, but it's the Baltimore Ravens taking the Cleveland Browns on. Bar, where you got? I've got Baltimore for 16, baby. You know, it's going to be a game like they end up losing for some weird fucking reason. Yep. Um, Nazario has them for 16. Mark, where you at? Listen, it's almost lower. I do think there is a bit of that Browns locker room that's going to be a bit more rejuvenated. Um, still take the Ravens for eight. I'm not going to get be crazy on this, but you know, it's, Robert, this could be just a really weird game. I believe famous Jameis Cookies is set to start. Um, he he, uh, David and Joku came back alive. I was very happy about that. Um, I have the Ravens for for 15 points because why not? I have them for 14. Coho, where are you at? Full 7, 16. Okay. Scully. Last time I took this team for 15 points, they lost to the Raiders. So we'll see what happens, but let's take them for 15. Got it. Um, Atlanta going to Tampa Bay. Um, two receivers are confirmed to be out. Um um, Scully, where are you thinking? I think the Falcons for five. This, this, if they can match up a similar game plan to what they did on Thursday night a few weeks ago, Tampa's defense will not be able to stop Dijon, Kirk, Drake, Mooney, Algier, Pitts, maybe two, whoever they throw the ball to. Um, and I just don't think the offense without Allen and Evans can, can keep up. So, Falcons for five. Um, uh, Coho, where you at? Um, I sorry, which one are we doing? Between the two, <laughs> <Atlanta>. <laughs> the first tip of that. Okay, uh, Falcons for three. Okay, uh, I have Atlanta for four. I think it's a divisional game, it should be pretty cut and dry because I think Atlanta just has more talent across the board, but the Vindler games get played closer to each other. And I think Baker's a good quarterback, and I think he he's going to have practice with these guys this week that are not normal things and see what can happen. But I still think Atlanta pulls out the win. Robert, where are we at? Yeah, I, I just don't know how Tampa's going to – well, they'll move the ball, but it won't be effective enough. Uh, so I have Falcons for six. For six, okay. Uh, Mark. Yeah, I meant to say this earlier, but Todd Bowles is a record of 47 and uh, 61 as head coach. Fucking sucks. He lost in their last game against uh, the Falcons. Um, even if they're in it, I'm pretty sure he'll find a way for them to lose this one, too. Uh, so uh, give me the Falcons for five. Falcons for five? Um, Nazario has Atlanta for two. And then Barr, um, where are you at? Uh, uh, before Monday night's game, I actually had the Buccaneers winning for five points. But now that Jalen McMillan and Sterling Shepard are pretty much 
Tampa Bay's one and two. Uh, give me the Falcons for nine. Okay. Last game on the slate. Uh, I think an injury is the only thing for making this a marquee matchup in the first time. But it's the Chicago Bears going to Washington. Um, Bar, we're going to start with you. Give me the Bears for ten. Uh, it's just the commander's defense. Mm-hmm. Nazario has Chicago for nine. Mark, where are you at? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a uh, – right now it's probably still a toss-up whether or not Jaden Daniels plays. Personally, I think he probably is. I think he probably would have came back in that game last week. Uh, this is probably a one-pointer any other week. I'll lean Washington for three. Okay. Um, Robert. I, I'm going with the assumption that Jane Daniels plays. Uh, so I'm going with Manders for four. Um, Coho. I'm going with the assumption that Jane Daniels doesn't play. I'm going to take Chicago for six. For six? Mm-hmm. Um, how he came out of the locker room, I think he plays. I think the difference in this game is going to be defense. I have, but I think it's ve- it's one of those. I, it's the game I'm going to be watching closely. Um, I think after a bye week, I think it, Chicago should be prepped. I don't know Washington just played Carolina, so kind of a let coming down from it to get back up for this one. Um, I went with Chicago for only one, though, because I think it's that good of a game that it could go either way. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Washington walks out of this game. Um, now to the Bears fan. Um, I really hope Jaden plays because this is a game I've been waiting for for the entire season because I want to see both of them, you know, on the field playing. Um, that being said, I think even if he does play with those ribs, I'm really worried that that the first hit he takes is going to knock him out. Um, it's just that if you watch him in college, he had a, he has a tendency for just putting his body at risk. Can't do that against, uh, 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 against the bears, uh, front seven and against guys like Jaquan Brisker, who will take your head off if you're not looking, um, and even if Kyle Gordon and Tyreek Stevenson still need another week to recover, uh, I like their chances to get the necessary stops on defense down the stretch. I'm going to take the Bears for ten, uh, just because I think I I I'm, I don't think he plays because I think the Commanders will want to protect their rookie quarterback. Um, plus, there are they're, they're, they're five and two, and there's just no reason, there's just no reason to put him out there. Um, and put him at risk. So, um, okay, so that's the show. I'm not that I need to do this, but I don't remember what everybody picks every week. I'm doing a bad job of keeping for Eliminator. Do you both know what you picked the last two, last three weeks? You, uh, I picked the Bengals this past week and they won. Yeah, I know me, you, and Robert are still in. So what I think about doing is I want to restart the eliminator, but you, me, and him get an extra life. Like basically because we are still alive in this one, but keep everybody back afloat and put it back onto the game. Um, uh, so bar, if all these picks, where would be your pick this week? You get to reset your, who you picked in previous week, Scully, Robert. My this week, Give me the Packers. Go Pack, go. Okay. Can't use them again, but again, you'll be able to use them in three weeks when we all are out again. I'll probably um, be out in two. So. Uh, Nazario, I'll message to get his. Mark, where are you sitting? Uh, give me the Lions. Okay. Uh, Robert. Well, now that I know I have an extra life, I'm going to live dangerously a little, and I'm going to pick uh, Denver. Okay, I like it. I, I'm Live dangerously. Fix the team that's playing the Panthers. Cool. Well, it's worked every time I've done it. <laughs> I mean, let me need a pick. Oh, um, we're back. Thanks for joining the show again. I just, I just didn't know I had an eliminator pick. I thought I got food. Um, <laughs> I just restarted. Oh, got it. Thank okay. you. Welcome to the show. Awesome. Me, Robert, and Scully get an extra life. If we Fantastic. 
Uh, love to hear it. Uh, I, I hope both your lives are fruitful. Uh, I'm going to pick the... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pick uh, the Vikings over the Rams for my eliminator. Okay, you can't pick them again. Yeah, I know. Okay, Scully. Pittsburgh's going to the Super Bowl. There we go. Turn in next week when we talk about should PNC Park be relocated. Um... <laughs> I'm going to go with the Jets. Oh, that's how you look dangerous. That's true. Um, that, is all right. that is the show. No one's watching this live, but it will re upload it because I hit the recording button. Um, this is not TV Chronicles. So thank you all for watching. Enjoy your football Sunday. We will catch you next time.